Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got some exciting new Tamiya products to share with you guys today, including their new Jagdpanzer Martyr 1. Very excited to get a hold of this one and start building on this. So you can see we've got some new modeling supplies, something new for car guys, and a new airplane kit as well. So, let's get started. I'd like to share with you now the Jagdpanzer Martyr 1 from Tamiya in 35th scale. This is a 100% new tooled kit and it will be out approximately about a month from what I understand because you can see right here this is an early sample copy but it has complete box art instructions just as the kit would come out to the general public not one of the white box kits. So the German Martyr 1 was basically created out of necessity. During the early stages of Operation Barbarossa, the Panzer 1s, 2s, 38Ts, tanks like that, were found to be very inadequate against some of the new heavier Soviet tanks that were coming out, like the T-34s. And with that, the Germans knew that they had the Pac-40 anti-tank gun that was very, very adequate against it, but it was always sometimes hard to move around because it wasn't on a uh, mobile platform. So the Germans, in making the Martyr series, had taken the Pac-40s, as well as a lot of captured Russian 76 millimeter guns, and put them on obsolete Panzer chassis or uh, captured other vehicles, like the Lorraine chassis that makes up for the Martyr one. So like I was saying, the Lorraine chassis were captured. They decided to do some manipulation on the back of the vehicle to get the larger Pac-40 mounted back there. And as you can see here, how the sides kind of hang over. The vehicle is actually pretty, pretty narrow. And with that, they had to extend the sides out a little bit more. Now those side armor are pretty thin. I think it's only about a centimeter thick. So it was designed to stop shrapnel and small arms fire, but definitely not taking on an anti-tank round. So let's take a look at the new plastic that is inside this kit. And the very first sprue we're going to take a look at is the A sprue up in here. And you do get two of this particular sprue inside here. So this has all of your road wheels, a little bit of your suspension. There is suspension on one of the other sprues, as well as Pac-40 ammo, and then the long links of track, and then individual link of track. So let's take a close look at all these different little pieces so you can see those really well. And the track you're looking at, the big long length of it, is actually molded with a slight sag to it like the real vehicle would have, which we'll show you in a second here after we show you the individual parts. And those are some tiny little tracks right there. And Give you a nice close up and then let's flip this around and then you can see the wave in the uh, the edge of it on the side of the tree here and then there's a natural wave inside the track itself and like I said you get two of those next up we have sprue B and B is made up of the uh, the actual hull pieces now this is not a bathtub style hull it's made up of individual pieces, but never had a problem putting a Tamiya one together like that. And on this side of the kit, you can see all the detail that is put into the side of the hull here. I'll kind of just go up and down and let you see close up of all of this stuff. And then of course, after I'm done talking here too, we will show you some just some still shots if you want to take and just freeze. You'll be able to take a look at those too. And that is sprue B. Next up is the uh, C sprue. Now the C sprue is made up of mainly the, uh, the superstructure of the vehicle. So we've got our sides here. And as you can see here, they're all molded as one piece or one each side is molded as one piece. We have our floor of the, uh, the fighting compartment, the shield on the pack 40. And then this is part of the, the mount for the pack 40 as well.
And finally, we have our D sprue. Now the D sprue is made up of the Pack 40 itself, as well as some of the suspension pieces. And this is something you might want to take a close look at. This is all the suspension molded as one big giant piece right here. And you've got both left and right sides of it here. The gun mount for the uh, Pack 40 and more of the gun itself. We're gonna move over here. This is the barrel. Now the barrel is molded as one piece for the entire length up until the uh, the muzzle brake and the muzzle brake is molded as two pieces here. We've got our figure. Take a look at their faces there. Some of the other little accessories on here to give you an idea what it looks like. Just like that. So that looks actually really nice. I think that's gonna be kind of a nice feature getting all that to get glued into place as one piece. Quickly, we'll show you the, the decals. Nothing's uh, crazy on those, just a couple of different markings that you can put on it. And you also do get a little thing of poly caps too. So the, uh, see the idler and the drive sprocket based on the fact that there's four all spin, I'm sure on this. We have our instructions, which we won't spend too much time. You guys have probably all seen the inside of a to me instruction book. But the thing that I like that to me is doing a lot now on this is they're including these color sheets inside for painting, which make it a lot easier to uh, figure out what paint jobs are. So there are a couple of different units in here. We've got a, a France 1944 in the German tricolor a 1943 Eastern Front with the, the gray, German gray underneath and then the flat white on top. And then of course just German gray. And then there's also a couple of pictures of the actual real vehicle. I guess there is a uh, sample of this in some more France at the uh, tank museum there. And then on the other side, a little bit of a history in multiple different languages there. But these are very nice to have. I like, I'm glad that they're doing this stuff again, that giving us a little history. That was always my favorite part, getting a Tamiya kit when I was a kid, was to read the little history that they had on it there. One of the quick thing I wanna point out to you too is I was reading through the, uh, the color chart here, and they also mentioned to the fact that there were some martyr ones that were sent to North Africa. Now they don't offer any type of uh, color chart or decals to do that type of variant, but I think that would be something that would be easily done because based on what they're saying in here, they were taking probably German gray vehicles just like this one, shipping them down to North Africa, overspraying them with like a desert yellow color and then putting them into combat. So you could probably even just do this vehicle right here. There are no numbers on it anywhere. It's just, you know, the national insignia and a few other unit marks that which you could probably change out. Paint it in the German gray, then overspray it with the, uh, the desert yellow, chip it up a lot. I love doing that, making it like a worn North African vehicle. That always looks really cool for a piece of armor. But like I said, there are no decals or anything inside, but uh, if you go into your spare parts box, I'm sure you can probably find tons of that stuff to make it into a, a North African vehicle. Now, I do plan on building this. Uh, in fact, right away, I'm going to start it right after we get this video done. I'm kind of torn, though. I The North African one seems really interesting, but also just doing a regular, you know, uh, German gray or even this one. I, I'm kind of torn which way we want to go most on it. Maybe the North Africa, only because you can really weather it up quite a bit, but... Uh, We'll figure that out more. If uh, in the comment section down below, tell me which one you guys would like to see the most, whether it be like a winterized, a regular just German gray, or the three tone, or even the North African one.
is something that's going to be very exciting for all modelers. Uh, to me, a masking tape is very, very good quality. And for the longest time, it was only available in 6, 10, and 18. And now, to me, it will be releasing 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter, and 3 millimeter. And this 1 millimeter is really, really tiny stuff, obviously. It's 1 millimeter, but great, I think, for masking canopies or doing pen striping or all kinds of other stuff on it. So these also will be out very soon. In great addition. I'm really excited to get a hold of this, especially sometimes masking little small things, having to cut up your other tape when it's already done for you. It's going to make it a lot easier. It that'll be arriving very soon, uh, which will be really good for car guys. If you want to have some figures just sitting around your vehicle is they have Campus Friends set number two coming out. This is a new tooled kit for 2020. Has uh, five figures in it as well as a little uh, scooter inside. So let's take a look at the parts inside of this. So let's take a look at the uh, the scooter or moped type vehicle in it first. Kind of an unusual looking color plastic, but a nice base that if you're going to make up the scooter just as is. You also get multiple sets of figures and I know sometimes for car modelers it's kind of hard finding figures. Armor modelers like ourselves we always have a lot easier job because it's a lot of figures being made but show you some close-up of their faces. Bodies and then you get things like a gig bag here with the guitar in it versus accessories like that. Now that's sprue one. And then we have another one here too, some more figures. This plastic's kind of hard to film. It's very, very shiny plastic and it's a very light color. So that gives you a general idea. So this is uh, also due out next month. And it has a retail of about $26. Kit we're going to take a look at is, is a reboxing of the Italeri kit, but is actually a new kit in itself. It only came out last year. And this is the F-35B Lightning. This is the Marine Corps one that has the uh, VTOL capabilities. And what Timmy has done here is taken Italeri's kit, put new decals and a new pilot figure inside. So let's take a look at the plastic that comes inside. Okay, we've got the first sprue here that has the top and bottom of the fuselage. Second sprue has some of the armament. And the third sprue has some of the other accessories, parts of the engine, tail fins, pieces like that. And finally, the canopy, which has the gold tent already on it. Now we'll take a look at the decals that come inside the kit. And here are the decals that go with the kit. As well as the new 70 second scale pilot. Pilot. 